In a recent video, I built a sound bar, and I'm using that in my living room. It's mounted directly below my TV. And while it does have surprisingly good bass, especially from such small speakers, my intention from the start was to build a subwoofer that goes with it to fill in the low end with a bit more authority. My first step in planning this was to find the right driver and then to design the box based on that. I really wanted this to be compact overall, so I selected a woofer based on that, one that will work in a relatively small box. I'm not going to go into the specifics of the design in this video. I recommend that you check out the build article. It has all of that extra information. Now, the way I'm building this is in two stages. There'll be an inner box that's made from half-inch material. And that's what I'm cutting up here. These are actually parts from my old table saw cabinet that I'm recycling for this. Since this will be the inside of the box, no one will see it anyway. These parts that I'm cutting here make up the port for the speaker. Typically you would use a round plastic pipe for that, but the port in this speaker needs to be long, so I'm making what's known as a slot instead. And you can think of that like it's a pipe that's been flattened. I need to make one other thing to go on the inside, and this is a brace. And what this does is it helps to keep the top and sides from vibrating. I've got two reasons for cutting the holes in the brace. And the first is that it reduces how much space it takes up inside the box. Internal volume is very important. And the second reason, of course, is that it just looks cool. There are openings I need to cut in the front and the back. And I'm starting with the port in the bottom of the front panel. And what I'm doing is I'm going to make the straight cuts with the table saw. And I'm not concerned about overcutting here because I can fill that up and then finish that off with the jigsaw. And what I'm trying to do here is make this as neat as I possibly can, because what I'll do is I'll cut out the hole in the front panel that goes on the outside of this with a router that will ride around this opening on the inside. The next one is the hole for the speaker, and I'm just cutting that roughly with the jigsaw. And then the back panel needs a rectangular opening for the plate amp. With those parts cut out, I can begin assembly, and I'm going to start with the port on the bottom. And this kind of looks complicated, but it's not really. The port is 26 inches long, and it folds back on itself, so that's the reason why I need all these parts. And also, I wanted to make it as compact as I possibly could, so it wouldn't take up too much space inside the box. The glue I'm using to put this together is polyurethane construction adhesive. And I'm using that because one side of the particle board that I'm using here is painted, and regular wood glue won't stick to that.
I let the glue dry on the inner box overnight. And now what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the parts for the outer box, the second layer. And I've decided to use OSB for this to make the thing look interesting, I hope. And besides, I have the piece of OSB left over from work I was doing inside my house, so that almost makes it free. How I'm doing this is I'm cutting the panels to begin with, oversized, and then I'm going to very carefully fit them to the box. And what I mean by very carefully is that I'm going to be mitering the corners, at least on the edges that show. I'm going to start with the bottom panel first and get that fastened. It's exactly the same size as the bottom of the box. And the glue I'm using here is a panel adhesive. And I'm just spreading that on to cover the whole surface. And then I've got a piece of wood that I cut box joints into to use as a notch spreader. And to keep it in place until the glue sets, I'm gonna fire in some pins. Given that this material is so random and wild looking, you'll never be able to see a pinhole anywhere here. It was at this point that I changed my mind about the front panel. I got to thinking that maybe having the front panel completely black and smooth would be a nice accent to the rest of the OSB and really set it off. So I grabbed a piece of MDF and I cut it down to rough size. And from there, I cut the bevels on the edges. Rather than rely on measurements for these bevel cuts, I'm gonna get it close to begin with. And then I'm gonna sneak up on the final fit by making a series of cuts. I find that to be the best and safest way to do this, even though it does take a little bit longer. One problem with using MDF for this is that it's actually thicker than the OSB that I'm using. So what I did was I cut a scrap of OSB and I beveled the edge. And you can see the way that lines up with the front panel that I've just cut. I actually need to cut the front panel smaller so that the very point or the apex of the miter lines up. Now, before I go any further, I want to sand the joints where the back and bottom panel meet the box. These need to be absolutely flat before I put on the other panels. To glue on the MDF front, I'm gonna be using regular wood glue, and that's mainly because it dries fast, and in about an hour, I can start putting on the other panels. To make it easier to clamp, I drill four holes where the speaker hole is, so that the clamps will fit right in there. And then when the glue dried enough on the front panel, I started cutting the OSB top panel. Now I'm using the same panel and adhesive as I used before, but I'm using stronger glue on the miter. Once again, I let the glue dry for several hours on the top panel, and later in the day, I cut out and glued on the two side panels in exactly the same way. One of the real problems with OSB is how flaky it can be, so I'm sanding that to get rid of as much as I possibly can and also to knock down the texture a little bit. Not a lot though, I wanna preserve some of it. With the sanding done, I'm gonna brush on several coats of water-based polyurethane, and this will help also with the flakiness since it'll kinda of act as a glue and hold everything in place.
I got the painting done, kind of. Even though it looks pretty good, the front baffle is not where I want it to be. But I need to finish putting the subwoofer together so I can finish the build, at least for now. What I'm doing right now is I'm putting some fiberglass insulation in here. Now traditionally you don't stuff a base reflex box, and I'm not going to put a lot in here, I'm just putting a little bit in. I find that it makes enough of a difference that it's worth it. And I talk about that a little bit more in the build article. The important thing to watch out for when you're doing this is to not block the vent. I'm going to lay the speaker down on its face so that the back is pointing up and I can get the plate amp put in. To fasten it, I'm using number six pan head screws that I painted black. Normally I flush mount this kind of hardware by cutting a recess, but I didn't see the point in doing that here because it's on the back of the speaker. You're not going to see it anyway. Now I can get it flipped over again to put the woofer in and I'm going to space it up with a couple of blocks so it's not sitting on the amplifier while I'm doing that. I painted this baffle yesterday and it's still soft apparently because just laying it on a towel left a pattern in it. But like I say, I'm not done with this yet, so try not to look too closely at that. And then once again, I'm using the same number six screws that I painted black. And that completes the project. I'm going to end this one off with a short demonstration showing the subwoofer in action.